But uh, no, look, this the, this is not a new idea. I was looking at this uh, line from Browning, the poet Robert Browning. He says, "A man's reach must exceed his grasp." Mm. Okay. Then Gandhiji says, "Find the purpose; the means will follow." Then, mm. and then one of my mentors was the late Professor C. K. Pralad, and uh, he influenced me a lot. And he always used to emphasize to everybody um, resourcefulness matters more than resources. Mm. Okay, and that stuck with me. And if you look at um, companies that become great, entrepreneurs who build um, businesses being scrappy, um, they all start out with an idea that and a vision, a dream, which vastly exceeds the <clears throat> the initial resources. Okay, but somehow they're able to over time accumulate or attract enough resources to um, to build something substantial. So I looked at these, and so I first made the intellectual shift that this is actually uh, very true. Then, of course, comes the hard part of applying it to your own life and changing. And so my changes began more in terms of taking on endeavors which were ambitious. Um, mm. Um, and where the, the starting resources were tiny. Um, you know, our experience starting social venture partners together is a good example of that. Just an idea, mm -hmm. uh, two people, no resources. And then you have a big event like Fast Pitch Friday, where, mm. you know, you're able to mobilize so much resources and so much talent and so forth. So my first experiences were, oh, Microsoft, let's set some incredibly audacious goal that doesn't seem possible. In fact, most people said this guy is going to get sacked um, because there's no way we're going to get there. Uh, but then, it, the, you know, what you believe is what you achieve. And we, so in the business setting, in my professional setting, I began to see that this is ab absolutely true. Then the challenge comes, the ultimate challenge is applying it to yourself. So I used mm. to feel, uh, you know, somewhat insecure about money and it didn't matter how much money you have. It's a mindset of insecurity. And then I spent about six, seven years over the last decade uh, cu cultivating an abundance mindset and I actually put practical steps in the book on that. Then I realized it's not just around money that you have scarcity and abundance. It's about everything. Uh, and for me, the next cr mountain on this is time. I feel... Mm incredibly scarce on time because I have so many things to do, so much to accomplish. So I'm always watching the clock and I'm always in a hurry and family and friends get a little frustrated with that behavior. Um, hmm. So, yeah, so this applies, I think, to all sorts of things, to expertise, to love, uh, you know, any number of things that abundance, scarcity, um, and it's, I think you first make the intellectual shift and then you follow um, with your actions, your internalizing. Mm.